Welcome everyone. We are gonna get started here in just one moment. Just want to give everyone here a little time to navigate Zoom and getting uh, online. Feel free to check out our website. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the chat. It's a good resource. Um, if you have any questions as we move throughout, um, check out our website, it's brand new. And well, in the next, in the last uh, six months or so, um, really easy to navigate and there's a lot of information there. So feel free to check that out. All right, well, we are um, here at 301. Um, I'm here in Champaign, Illinois, so central time, but hopefully um, you all, uh, I'm guessing, are joining us from all over the world. This is MOOCs to Masters, How to Stack from Coursera into Geese Business at Illinois. So we are going to talk a lot about MOOCs today. Um, before we kind of jump to the next screen, and I want to find out where everyone is from, this QR code on your first slide is um, just a great resource. Go ahead and scan that if you'd like to connect with one of our admission counselors that that work with us here at Geese, um, just to have a conversation about your goals or anything about uh, what we talk about today and, and cover today. So uh, there's just a short form that you can fill out, and we will reach out to you sooner than later. But as we get started, um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll. You should be able to see a, um, a big map on your screen and there's a QR code or a URL address at the top. Go ahead and scan that code and, and uh, put your pinpoint. You'll just tap on the screen where you're from. We love seeing where all of our uh, registrants are from all over the world. I, as I said, I'm from um, Champaign, Illinois. I'm not from here originally, but I'm, I'm living currently in Champaign, Illinois. Um, Caitlin, my guest, she uh, lives out in Montana, right, Caitlin? Yes, yes, Southern uh, Montana. Southern Montana. So we've got, um, you know, the United States covered from both both the Midwest and the uh, Western side, <laughs> but um, it looks like we've got some people from the U.S., Excellent. It's always a wide range. So, um, but while you're doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Kate Deering. I am an assistant director within Geese Online Programs. Um, excited for you all to be here to take this uh, maybe first step in kind of researching Geese business and seeing the the learning options that we have for you. Um, we're going to talk a lot about um, all the different steps or access points that you have to get involved and, and start your, your learning journey or ju jumping in wherever you're at already. Um, we're very lucky today to have um, a special guest, one of our current students, Caitlin Hamilton, and I'm gonna have her introduce herself here in a moment, but um, she's a current learner in our IMSA master's degree program. So we're very excited um, to have her because she started as a MOOC learner and has, taken steps to move into um, obtaining her, her master's degree. So a great example of what everybody here um, is able to, to accomplish. So so let's just kind of, um, actually one other thing I wanted to note, um, my colleague Lori Hayes is also here in the background. And so um, she is gonna handle all the questions in the Q&A in the chat. So I would suggest if you have questions, go ahead and throw them in the Q&A. Even as we get rolling and you have questions for our, our panelist, Caitlin, um, just about the student experience, go ahead and put those in the Q&A feature. It's much easier for everybody to kind of follow the questions along there. Um, though, if you have to, we do have the chat feature as well. So, um, so here's our agenda today. I'm gonna just give you a little bit of an overview of Geese Online, because I'm guessing a lot of you could possibly be new to Geese Business. So we wanna just start there. And then we'll talk about the stackable design and all the different options that you have. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the learner journey steps as far as application process, what credentials that you can earn, the costs, things like that. And then um, we'll talk a lot about the student experience as far as networking goes, ways that you can get involved, um, things like that. So, And then we should have plenty of time for the Q&A feature at the end. Right now, um, I was going to throw it back to Caitlin and see if you would mind um, introducing yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to Geese, possibly, and um, I guess kind of what your background is. Okay, so I am a non-traditional student. I graduated college um, in 
2012 with an agribusiness degree. Um, took some time off. I'm a stay-at-home mom. My husband manages a bison ranch here in rural Montana. Um, so we have a small college 30 minutes away, but looking to continue my education, um, really online is my greatest option out here. Um, I looked at other programs and decided, went through Coursera, just looking for courses that interested me and found geese through there um, and decided to go on the accountant path and kind of, it's kind of family business accounting. Um, I do a little bit of accounting in my office manager work here. So that's what interested me. And I got involved in the IMSA program. Excellent. And I, I already see a couple of questions um, for that specific path. And we are definitely going to cover um, which I'm guessing for most of you who are here are probably MOOC learners. And we're definitely going to cover how that works with the courses that we offer, how you get credit, how you can stack your MOOCs. Um, we are going to get to all of that. But first, I did want to talk a little bit about geese business. And um, if you are new to um, new to geese and you're joining us for the first time and you're unfamiliar with geese online programs, I just wanted to share a little bit about the qualities that we've built this program um, on. The first pillar or the first quality is flexibility. Um, and in this online environment where the GEESE mission, just like the University of Illinois, um, is providing accessible education to working professionals, we really take this um, flexibility seriously. And just like Caitlin said, she would never be able to probably earn this, this master's degree um, if it weren't online and, and had that option. So um, GEESE is really flexible in how you access all the information because you are doing it 100% um, online. So from your home, from your vacation, from wherever you're at in the world, along with your full-time job. So our, our master's degree programs and our, our credentials are all built to built for, for full-time working professionals. Um, so, so that's really nice. You, you know, you have choices when it comes to what time you're going to be attending your live sessions. Um, our courses are designed to allow you to attend a live session typically during the week, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you'll have time in the weekends to do your homework and meet with your groups for you know your project work. And then um, you'll be turning in assignments kind of early that next week, typically on Tuesdays. So that's kind of how our, our work week runs. Um, your coursework is very flexible uh, as well in that you decide how many courses you want to take at a time. So you'll typically take one or two each eight week term, and that will determine how fast you'll complete your degree as well or your graduate certificate or um, the, the course that you're in. And then lastly, we have a lot of flexibility with our tuition and how we build that. We have a pay-as-you-go tuition model, which I personally think is really great. You only pay for each course that you're registered for um, as you move throughout the program. So you're never gonna have to pay the full sum up front, um, which is very, very nice. Um, the second pillar is stackability. And that is hopefully why everybody's kind of here today. Our credentials and our online programs, they stack and they work together. So really wherever you're at in your learner journey, I, I have a, I have a, a, I guess an access point or um, the next step for you and all of our kind of credentials work and they, they work together. So you could start for, uh, you could start with a MOOC uh, and kind of develop uh, some learning in this specific skill set. You could stack that into taking one course with us just to check it out, see how it goes. Um, do you like the way that we deliver information? Um, I'm guessing that you'll love it. And you can stack that one course into maybe a graduate certificate, perhaps, which is 12 credit hours. And those are also stackable into our full master's degrees. So we, we have a lot of options. Um, and so you can always feel like you're working towards that next step, I think, um, which is really nice. Um, and then lastly, uh, one note on the stackability. Obviously, we're going to talk about that um, a lot today. Uh, one other stackable option is that we actually have our IMSM degree, which is our Master's of Management. Um, that is fully stackable into our MBA uh, degree as well. So um, another recent uh, announcement by, by the college. 
Um, and then lastly, online by design. This means that we specifically developed this program actually back in 2016 when we launched the IMBA program. Um, it was designed to be delivered to, to thousands of learners worldwide. Um, we really put a lot of time and effort into designing a program that really had highly engaging content that you could access, you know, on your computer, anywhere, um, after work, on vacation, um, without giving up any of your career or your family commitments. So um, we also specifically designed it to include a lot of interaction and collaboration, uh, despite being in this online space. And so we'll, we'll talk a lot about that today and how we um, incorporate that into one of our, one of our courses. But Caitlin, um, I know you kind of touched a little bit on this, but which of these resonated mostly with you when you were kind of researching degree programs um, and, and credentials? Uh, definitely the online by design. I was able to do nothing, no admissions um, or, or anything needs to be done in person. Um, I like the flexibility. I was able to see the recommended lengths of semesters and then choose my length of semesters and see the laid out program um, and flexible options there, flexible options lined out as which class to take in which semester to be done. Um, yes, and then the stackability, I was able to start. I was accepted in April, able to start Coursera through the summer um, after I got that free Coursera um, login and accepted from Geese and then was able to kind of take a slower approach in my, once my courses started and just refer back to the Coursera videos uh, for the study material. Excellent. And we are going to definitely talk about what, what it's, what does it mean to take a Coursera MOOC and what does it mean to take a GEESE four credit course that you're going to earn trans transcript credit for? So that's a, a typical question and um, we're definitely going to talk about that uh, today. But when we, we talk about stackability, I really love this slide. I think this illustration is... Um, just really great at showing you all the different access points and how you can stack and, and build them together. Um, the first access point I would say is that free online course, that smallest orange box. Um, that would that would illustrate a, a Coursera MOOC or massive online open course. So um, I'm guessing a lot of you are currently enrolled in a MOOC, which is amazing. Um, whether it's um, you know, I'm not sure if you've taken one of our Illinois um, geese MOOCs um, or a different one, doesn't matter, um, but at least you understand the what a MOOC offers as far as providing the, that foundational material in a specific topic. The access point number two is that four credit course, that second blue box. So if you were to take two Illinois um, uh, geese Coursera MOOCs and stack those into a four credit course, which two are included in every one of our four credit courses, um, you could earn four hours of transcript credit and, and take a course that is included in one of our degree programs. So you could earn those four credit hours, you could take a course as a non-degree student and really check it out, see if you like you know, the group work and, and the live sessions. Um, and we'll talk more about that here in a second, but see if you like it and um, it's just a great way to, 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 to try out a course. Um, and then that next access point is a graduate certificate. And those are 12, those are made up of 12 credit hours. So essentially, um, typically there'll be three, four credit hour courses. Sometimes we have a couple, two credit hour courses included in our graduate certificates, but this is where you can master a specific topic and have those 12 credit hours done earn a, a recognized campus graduate certificate um, that an employer perhaps would recognize, you know, maybe you um, take strategic leadership in management or digital marketing. You kind of become a, you know, um, a master of that specific topic through a graduate certificate completion. So those are really great. Um, and then if you decide to work another year and decide later, like, oh, maybe I do want to stack, um, 
an accounting, maybe you do an accounting foundations graduate certificate and you realize you really like accounting, even though you don't have a background in it, um, let's, you, you know, you decide, oh, I think I could excel with an IMSA degree, um, start doing some accounting, uh, maybe start a new career. You could actually take those 12 credit hours from that graduate certificate and stack that into your master's degree and have 12 credit hours done, um, which is really nice. So, um, so those are the the four access points. You don't have to start. There's no order. You can, you know, kind of enter as you go. Um, they all have separate application processes that are not hard um, and, and pretty simple and, and, and straightforward. Um, I guess before we jump into, you know, the MOOCs and the four credit options, just Briefly, Caitlin, in your words, how would you describe the difference in just taking a MOOC, for instance, versus being enrolled in a in a degree program and having all that high engagement component from geese in addition to the MOOC? Like what what does that what does that feel like? So the MOOC is at your own schedule. It gives you a suggested schedule, but you can always reset your deadlines. You can do it throughout. The summer, you don't have to stick in a semester block, um, finish as fast as you like. On the high engagement side, I have a little toddler coming up. <laughs> On the high engagement side, it is a lot more structured. It is following the class timeline. It is staying on schedule with homework assignments, um, staying on schedule with live sessions, being able to refer to office hours with your professors. Um, so that is more of a traditional class setting where the Coursera is really, you set your timeline, you set your motivation and continue, um, keep your own momentum there. Okay, perfect. That's a great explanation. A lot of times we refer to, and Caitlin, that's totally fine if you need to tend to your little person. <laughs> uh, this is really real world. I mean, we have a lot of students that have families and, and sometimes little kids pop up or you have something else going on. So that's, that's totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. We refer to the MOOCs often as kind of like your virtual textbook in our courses. So um, think about that. You can do, you know, you can you can do the background reading. You can, we're gonna get deeper into this here in a moment, but you can do all that asynchronously. What Geese offers in addition to that from just taking a MOOC is the high engagement component. And we're gonna touch on this, but that includes live sessions. You're gonna have group projects. You're gonna have, you know, assignments, tests, essays, things like that, that are, really going to work um, hard at providing practical examples and conversations around those um, textbook materials. So it really pulls through that MOOC material, but in a, in a live way, in a, um, you know, kind of uh, project uh, based way. Okay, here's another um, poll. I'm just curious to see kind of what we're dealing with today. How many MOOCs have you completed um, if you're here today, have you done zero? Have you taken one, three, too many to count? Maybe you're maybe you're an, a MOOC expert and you just love learning. Um, doesn't look like anybody here is doing that, but um, it looks like zero. And let's see, we've got a few people at one. One person's taken three plus. I'll give you guys a second to to complete this. Um, yeah, the MOOCs are, the MOOCs are really great. We actually do have a current list, um, that I'll have Lori throw in the links into our chat, but, um, we have three different lists of all of the MOOCs that are included in either our IMBA, IMSA, or IMSM degrees so that you could choose a few from those and make sure you're on the right track. Um, and and start taking some of the MOOCs that are included in our courses. So I think those lists are really helpful. And Lori will um, throw those in the chat here today. So, okay, it looks like the majority has taken one MOOC, which is excellent. So thanks for sharing that. That gives us an idea of kind of um, what kind of population we have here today. Um, but I think the the one thing, as you can see, these are all the, the, the degree um, access points that we talked about on that stackability slide. Um, but the one thing that's, that strings all of these together is that the way that we've developed and delivered our coursework. So we have structured them in a way that they're all online. Um, 
And again, you're not sacrificing, you know, your job or your trips or um, anything like that. And you're still going to have the interactions and the collaboration from being in a live um, classroom and, and group projects and, and whatnot, which, um, again, is an addition to those MOOCs. This, this slide actually really... Um, shows you which what comes from which part. So the asynchronous component is gonna be on the Coursera platform. Um, these are non-credit bearing courses. And this is a common question, I think, for MOOC enrollees. Um, it, it, it's amazing if you've taken a MOOC, especially one that's included in one of our courses. The way the credit works for a MOOC, um, we get this question often, like, will I earn transcript credit from taking this MOOC ahead of time? The answer is, no, you're not going to earn transcript credit, but you will earn a completion credit if you earn your certificate. So what happens is, say you take your Coursera MOOC on the Coursera platform, you earn your certificate, your digital badge, um, and then you apply to one of our programs, either as a non-degree student to take one course, a grad certificate, or a full master's degree. As soon as you link, uh, you apply and you're admitted, and we link up your Coursera component, um, your Coursera platform with Canvas, which is the other platform that we operate on, it will recognize any of those certificates that you've completed. So you you will earn that completion credit. Um, you'll get that check mark in your course um, curriculum and your syllabus. Um, you will want to refer back to that because as you move through each week of an eight week term, um, it moves fast and it is based upon that foundational material in the MOOC. So you're definitely going to want to review. Um, and and we'll have Caitlin kind of talk us through how she works through that. But um, so that's how the credit works. You'll earn that completion credit if you've earned that certificate on Coursera. Um, the Coursera MOOCs are basically pre-recorded quizzes. Um, I'm sorry, pre-recorded videos from our faculty members. You'll have quizzes to test your knowledge. There'll be some assignments and then you'll have some peer evaluations. That's kind of a review on what you've learned. In addition to that, in a four credit four hour course on um, at Geese, um, you'll have that high engagement component. This is found on the, the Canvas platform. It builds on those MOOCs, as I mentioned, but you will have a 90 minute live lecture each week. These are offered at several times, so don't get nervous. It's not a set time that you have to be available every week. Um, we'll give you two to three times to attend. And then we also record those lectures so you can always watch the recording if you need to. Um, there'll be some team and group projects. You'll have some case studies, you'll have exams, tests, things like that. Um, and then you'll have faculty office hours so that you can get involved with your faculty members, get to know them, attend faculty office hours and have your questions answered and, and get to know some other students in, in that time. So those two components work together. And that is the foundation for every single course that we have, regardless if it's a non-degree course, a grad cert, um, or a master's degree. So, um, Caitlin, in your words, can you just kind of relay that um, and and how the Coursera component and the high engagement component works work together for you? Yes. So when I got access to Coursera, I actually started. I looked at what would be required. I registered for my classes for the fall semester, and then through the summer, I took a digital marketing class which does not go in the IMSA program at all. It was just extra learning. That kind of helped me figure out the MOOC and Coursera. Um, I didn't have to finish that. It was just learning from my own knowledge um, going into the IMSA program and the courses I would, I would be taking in the fall. Um, I started through Coursera. I finished one and a half MOOCs before my semester even started. And then as we go through those live sessions with the professor that are 90 minute lectures, I can take and look back on my Coursera videos, which are four minutes, maximum I've seen is 16 minutes. And so they're a lot more bite size that I can go back and study one specific concept versus going through the 90 minute session again. But I do, Usually my study per week, I watch the live session and then to go back before the final exam, I always review that full 90 minute session again. Also with Coursera, 
studying the knowledge checks on Coursera is a good way to study for what is going to be available on the high engagement. Coursera gives you kind of a heads a head start on what to expect that week. You can kind of see everything listed, all the concepts listed that way. Um, and it really helps when you go into the live session to see what what is expect what's coming that week. Yeah, I think a lot of students end up doing it. Well, everybody finds their own way, right? How it works and how yeah. they like to study. But it seems like the majority do the Coursera MOOC, like the, that module the week before, and they have that done and they just, and then you have the live session that's going to, you know, you already have that knowledge and you, you've, you've, you've gone through that. So um, mm -hmm. what, um, can you just give an example of like what a group project would look like? Yes. So a lot of the group projects I've done, we've had one to two um, per, per um, the eight weeks. Um, so one to two group projects in class per MOOC, and it's about four to five group members. We have a case study. We analyze something in regards to a business, or we have freedom to go look at a business on our own, look at their annual reports, and then there's a list of questions. It's very easily broken out into five parts. And then we're able to come together on Zoom and put it together into a slide or put it into a document, something, whatever is asked of how to present that. Okay, great example. And I think, you know, IMSA projects are probably quite different than MBA projects um, mm -hmm. as also MSM projects. So, but the majority of our courses all have group projects um, within them as well, so. Um, so we mentioned the high engagement component and the live sessions. Like this is just a really fun part of our courses. There's a couple um, examples on the screen, but um, this is how we deliver the innovative content. And, uh, you know, it, it really has to do with our amazing faculty members. We have 74 plus faculty members who teach in online programs. They have so many years of, of experience and they're just really down to earth and approachable. I think those faculty office um, office hours that I mentioned, I mean, sometimes they have four of those, you know, in a week, like they are really open to meeting with the students. They're really fun. Um, in addition to that, we have a lot of support staff. So I, I just want you to know that there's um, there's a lot of work and effort that goes into, you know, in, in the background for these live sessions. We have 250 TAs. We have 55 GEESE staff members that are in um, teaching and learning that bring this content to life. And so um, on average, we do about 40 live sessions each week. We have six um, state-of-the-art studios here uh, that are really cool. If you're ever here, try to try to get a tour of them. But um, And then we just broke ground, uh, well, it might have been almost a year, a year now, but um, in a new uh, business facility that's going to have seven new studios. So we're really excited about that. Um, Caitlin, who, I guess you haven't had too many, uh, courses yet, but who's been your, um, your favorite professor so far? I don't you, know if I can say that. <laughs> can I? <laughs> well, you can say it, and you haven't, again, you haven't really, you've only taken how, are you on your fourth? I'm on my second semester. Second semester. So, so really, so we had it with the holiday week yesterday. I had two live lectures today, so I met two new professors today. Oh, cool. Uh, Professor Lima is very fun. Okay. Yeah. So, so some of them open up their classes with songs. Sometimes they get you singing. or they, <laughs> they, Like they're all very um, fun and, and interactive and they all have their own way. They're kind of their own style. So um, mm -hmm. I always like to share, I just want to share a quick video for you just to give you an idea. This is actually a professor from one of our um IMBA classes and IMSM classes, but it does give you an idea of what a live session is like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play this video. Hello and welcome from wherever in the world you are. One thing you'll know by now is realize you are not going to be able to just sit back. Got excited. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. 
I do not believe in exams. It will be a collaborative event, something you do over time with others. And that's what we do in this class. I want you to put up your hands and tell me two associations from the case. Tradition comes to mind. Associated with a, a working man. Also inexpensive and very accessible. And my class is by saying, all of you, go out in the world and be successful. So that that's um, Professor Hayden Noel, and he he's just great. He's very you know he's got a lot of energy, um, but just a great example of you know what a live session is like. And again, for the live sessions, you do have some choices. Typically, you know our program is global, so there'll be a morning session, an afternoon, an evening, maybe. Um, there's options, and you will get the most out of your coursework if you go to the live sessions, just because there's a lot of um, interactions. You're going to have small group breakout sessions in these classes where you're going to have discussions and you're going to either like review a, a question from the professor or a case study and then re report back to the class and, and, and talk about it. So um, the live sessions are great, but it's okay also to watch recording because we get it. You're busy. You know, everybody's got a lot going on. So that's just fine too. Um, okay. Let's keep moving here. Um, one more poll that I just wanted to roll out here. What's your end goal? Um, are you looking for a graduate certificate? Are you looking just to take one course with us, stick with the MOOCs? Um, looks like MBA program. We have the, the MBA, the MSM, and the MSA program. Um, so far, 100% of you are interested in the IMBA. All right. Oh, we got a couple IMSA. Great. Caitlin's your, your person. If you have specific questions, throw those in the chat for Caitlin. Um, all right. So it looks like MBA and MSA. Um, oh, we got a couple MSM. So, so cool. So everybody seems to have an end goal and maybe a, a full master's degree. So that's great. Um, if you've, you're at the MOOC and you've just taken a MOOC so far, um, that's perfect. You can build upon that and ultimately end in one of those master's degrees, which is really nice. Um, if you want to try, as I said, uh, uh, just one course that would be stackable, you're not really out any time. If you want to do this, you can just do a really brief application. We do require a bachelor's degree. Um, and you could take one of these courses that is in one of those master degree programs. Try it out. Um, you can see the tuition that's involved here at the bottom of your screen. Um, again, this will include the Coursera MOOCs, two of them, in addition to that high engagement component. Great way to try a course out and earn um, credit towards a, a grad cert or a degree. The other option would be start with a graduate certificate. And these are, again, our Illinois IMBA, IMSA, and IMSM courses. Um, we have currently 11 uh, graduate certificates that are made up of 12 hours of transcript credit. So there's 11 here. We're launching two more this fall, business analytics and um, mergers and acquisitions. So we'll have a total of 13, which is uh, crazy. We have a lot of graduate certificates, but um, these will have a transcriptable certificate upon completion. Um, so you could, you know, take that to your employer and say, I've developed mastery in this specific area, like financial management or taxation or um, value chain management, any of those. Um, so it's stackable, or you can build upon that and um, use that towards your, your degree. Um, I just wanted to touch briefly on our three master's degrees. I know that we're not going to get too deep into these, and I want to allow a lot of time for questions at the end. Um, but we do offer three master's degrees. The IMSM is a Master of Science in Management, and this is made up of um, several different learner types. We have a lot of non-business backgrounds in the, the MSM that are looking to really develop their leadership skills and their management base. Um, we have a lot of business backgrounds that are pivoting to include management. So maybe they um, have been in a kind of a sole um, contributor role up till now, and they're looking to lead a team. This would be a great degree. Uh, and then we also have a lot of highly technical backgrounds that are looking to broaden their business knowledge and maybe bring in some business acumen and some leadership skills. It um, This degree comes in at just under 12K. And you can 
complete this degree in anywhere from 12 to 60 months. Typically, one to two years is what, what it takes, but the graduate college does have a maximum of five years. So if you really wanted to spread it out, that's okay or flexible, um, but typically it's going to take you anywhere from one to two years. Five start dates. So you can pretty much start anytime you want. Um, it will include six core courses and then three electives. So we do have a few tracks that you can follow or you can just kind of make your own elective path and just take three courses that interest you. And then lastly, as I mentioned, this degree um, is fully stackable into the MBA degree, which is really nice. The MSM does not have a work experience requirement, whereas the IMBA does require a minimum of three years of work experience. So this is a great stepping stone. Give yourself some years to develop uh, a little bit in your career. And then you also can just wait another year and, and decide whether or not even you need to go deeper into the MBA. So a great building block um, as well. Okay, the next um, degree is the Master of Science in Accountancy, which is what Caitlin is, is complaining. This program is going to really build expertise in the fundamentals of accounting, financial reporting, audit and control, and then also U.S. federal taxation. Um, you could be just kind of developing your base um, to have some formal training like like Caitlin is, or you could be a mid-level professional that really needs that, you know, that technical foundation to move into that C-suite position. So a lot of different um, players in this degree. This one is going to run 20 to 28K. And the, the reason that's a range is because of your elective choices. So you do um, have some choices there, but one of your electives, one of your three electives has to be a non-accounting elective, which those are $332 per credit hour compared to $850 per credit hour for the accounting elective. So that's where you could see a range. So you potentially could take three non-accounting electives and that would be uh, more on the, the lower end of that, that tuition. Um, anywhere from 18 to 36 months that can, you can you can take to complete um, this degree. And that typically is taking one or two courses each eight week term, um, as we mentioned, and that's entirely up to you. You can even take a, a term off. I know we didn't mention that earlier, but um, you know, sometimes something comes up in your job or maybe you've had a, a health issue or something personal. You can take an eight week term off. You would just work with your advising team and that's just fine with us. Um, again, you would have that five year max to graduate. Uh, the MSA is 32 credit hours, and so five of those are core. And then we have three electives, which um, we have a data analytics concentration, or you'll take that one non-accounting um, elective and then two other choices. So um, the IMSA just has two start dates. So you can start in January. I'm Actually, let me rephrase that. Um, three start dates, January or August, you can start with a full core course, or you could start in our summer term, which is May, and start with an elective eight-week term course. That's that's fine too. So um, I guess, Caitlin, can you just re remind us how you transitioned from taking a MOOC to the degree, uh, the IMSA degree? Were you just kind of dabbling in accounting when you when you came across a MOOC or how, how did that all work? Yes. So when I decided to take and do a few courses just for learning, I took a few night classes in my community college. Um, nothing, I mean, photography 101, et cetera, just <laughs> stuff for extra learning, finding my habits. Um, and then I started researching online kind of the same online course, QuickBooks, et cetera, because um, I have a small business that I took QuickBooks in. So I did a couple QuickBooks and then found Coursera and QuickBooks um, and then just deep dove into Coursera and found Geese College through there. Okay, and then so. you applied and um, mm -hmm. how was that application process? Uh, the application process was very smooth. I think I got my, I think I got my acceptance within maybe within six to eight weeks or so. It was very, I felt like it was very quick that way. Good. Um, and once you're accepted, you've got the access to Coursera and you can take a variety of 
courses. Like I said, I just took a digital marketing, um, social media marketing, just because it piqued my interest, not related to the accounting at all. Um, yes, that's <laughs> that's kind of how I found it. Excellent. And I can still, through the summer, I can choose to take a non-accounting course, um, part of the selective courses, or I can take the summer off, or I can just find something else on Coursera that piques my interest. Yeah, you will have access to all of our MOOCs as as an admitted Illinois student too, which is which is really nice. So yes. Um, okay, so the last degree is the the MBA, and it's I know from our poll, it sounds like a lot of people are here for the MBA. Um, this Master of Business Administration is going to take a much deeper dive into the skills needed to run an entire business business with management skills, accounting, finance skills, financial skills. Um, it's also going to focus in on learning business theory. Um, and then you're also going to focus in on a lot of current trends. And again, there's going to be so much practical application and current uh, real world case studies that you're going to be working through with lots of examples um, from your faculty members and your, and your fellow classmates to learn. A lot of times you bring an example even from your current job that maybe is uh, you know, a problem that you're facing and, and turn that into a case study and a, a project in your class. So it's very, um, you'll see, you know, impact even uh, in your current uh, role. Um, this degree is going to be just under 24K. You're seeing a theme here, anywhere from two to three years to complete your schedule, your pace. Um, the MBA, just like the MSM, does have five start dates. So you can pretty much start in the MBA um, there's always an application window open. 72 credit hours. So you'll do 18 courses. Um, 12 of those or six specializations will be your core courses. And then, I'm sorry, four of those will be your core courses. And then you have two focus area specializations, which um, will be six courses. And that's where you get to really cater your MBA to your interests. And you'll have a lot of elective choices like um, we have fo five focus areas that you get to choose from, mergers and acquisitions, entrepreneurship, global challenges and business. Um, I'm drawing a blank at the other two, uh, but you get to choose two, two of those five or create your own elective path, which is really nice. And then lastly, to round out your knowledge, you'll have two capstone projects on two of those six specializations, which just reviews those three, the three courses that are in that specialization. Um, and then you'll have a program capstone before you graduate as well. So um, very thorough, uh, full degree. And for all of our master's degrees, I wanted you to know just a note about the I. Um, the I is going to refer to the method of delivery only. We get this question a lot, especially from, from new um new folks that are looking at one of our master's degrees, the I degree is used just to refer to all of our master's degrees um, and, and the way that they're delivered, which is online. This is not going to be noted on your transcript or your degree certificate. So um, you will earn a diploma from the University of Illinois, uh, a master's of science and management, or a master of business administration, um, it won't say that I or online anywhere on those materials, which is really nice. Okay, let's change gears a little bit and talk about um, networking. A little, let's get a little bit outside of just the classwork and the coursework. Um, and a common question is how how do I connect in this virtual environment when it's all online? Um, the answer is many many ways. We have geese led opportunities. We have student led opportunities. I'll touch on um, actually. Let me just ask you, Caitlin, first. Like so far, what how have you networked in the program? Um, I've networked mainly in the courses and the students taking the courses with me okay. through group projects, through questionnaires. Um, Canvas allows you to connect um, a lot with those just in your course and even more with those in your group project. There's a lot of message boards, right? Like in, yes. in Canvas. So you're you're offering feedback and you're asking questions. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's weekly another... discussion boards. There's program discussion boards in uh, workplace. But a lot of it is the discussion boards strictly right in Canvas through the course. 
Okay. Workplace, mm -hmm. um, which Caitlin mentioned, this is a great option or uh, resource, I guess, for our, our, our degree learners. Um, it is a social media group just for our students that, um, oh gosh, there's so many things that happen in workplace. There's a study group for almost every course. There's people sharing study guides. There's degree planning help. There is people job searching, helping each other with resumes. Um, the second bullet under student-led opportunities is student-led meetups. These happen quite frequently um, all over the world, domestically and internationally, where our students say, hey, um, I'm Kate. I live in Champaign, Illinois. Is there anybody who lives close enough to be able to meet up? And then they create this uh, network really close to their home and they meet in person at a coffee shop or a restaurant. Uh, I'm guessing you probably haven't done that too much being out in Southern Mont Montana. Have you met any other students? Mm -hmm. No, I have not yet. Yeah. We'll give it time. Hopefully we'll we'll find <laughs> we'll find a connection for you. But um yep. and then you know, group work, you are gonna get to know sometimes you're in the same groups as other, you know, the same students, and you really do get to know them. Um we also have events here uh that we sponsor, and those are iConnects, these are kind of meetups that we host all over the world where we'll bring in um, either a speaker or maybe our leadership team is, is traveling and we'll create an event around that and invite prospective learners, current students, alumni, and have um, a fun time. Immersions, these are great opportunities. These are um, in-person uh, or virtual, actually. Uh, we host these about four times each year where we'll have an application process and then 30 to 40 students will participate in um, a project based uh, around a company. And uh, we just had one in Mexico City two weeks ago um, where you'll go for the week and you have um, various meetings throughout the week with stakeholders that are involved with that company. And you'll work on that project. You'll also do really fun stuff like cultural um, excursions. And then it usually ends in presenting your your ideas and, and, and solutions. So very rewarding experience. There is extra charges um, or costs with that. Um, and then if you're in the IMBA program, it could count as one of your uh, capstone projects. So that's nice. And then lastly, I just wanted to touch on iConverge. iConverge is our kickoff event every year that we invite all of our students in person to campus. Um, you don't have to come. It is not required. We typically have around 500 students or so um, join us, alums, and, and all of our degree, degree programs are invited. Um, three days of fun. We have professional development, amazing speakers. Larry Geese came in and, and spoke to the group um, last year. Uh, really cool event. We go to a football game, tailgate. So if you ever have the chance to do that, um, our, we always have a theme and last year it was networking. So we did a lot of speed networking and really focused in on expanding your network. So it was a really, um, a really great theme for that. So lots of ways to network. If you have specific questions about that, throw them in the Q&A or the chat. These are just a couple workplace posts just to kind of show you a little bit about what it's what what you can find on there. There's a lot of really inspirational stories. There's this middle person was taking their live session from the beach, which I'm quite jealous of that. Uh, um, so lots of lots of things happen on workplaces, so an excellent uh, resource. Here's a, a, a couple pictures from the Seattle immersion. So we do, again, do these domestically and internationally. Um, we just did one in Mexico City this summer. We have one coming up in um, Singapore and Malaysia and then a South Africa immersion. So those are very exciting. Um, we've done one in Houston. And um, just if you ever get a chance to talk to somebody who's been on one of these, they're really great and, and very rewarding. Um, this is iConverge. We just hosted this, 505 students and alumni attended. Um, that picture on the right is, is uh, we, we took everybody out of State Farm Center and, and pulled them out to the front lawn and had this huge crane and took a picture of everyone. It was really hot out there. Um, but anyways, this is a really great opportunity um, as well. Here's just a few pictures of meetups that happen all over. As I said, um, you know, Chicago, they went to a Cubs game. There's meetups in South Africa, Tokyo. So it's not just a domestic thing that happens. 
Um, okay, let's move a little bit more into the specifics of the application now. Um, but before I do that, I did want to mention the student and academic support team um, is there for you. This is our advising team. So don't think that we're just going to throw you in and you have to do all your degree planning and figure out everything by yourself. That's not true. We have a full team to support you. Um, they have office hours. You can do one-on-one -on -one appointments. There's always email support, um, lots of ways to connect with them. And they're really, really helpful with how to pair specific courses up or um, degree requirement questions, um, things like that. Have you, did you have to meet with an advisor yet, Caitlin? I have not. I followed a lot of the degree planning PDFs though. Okay. Did you find those on like workplace? Yes, I think so. Okay. We, all, we actually put a lot of sample plans out there too. So you can mm -hmm. do it by yourself. That's fine. But there's also, you know, sometimes if you have a timeline you're trying to meet and sometimes courses are only offered at certain times. So if you do have questions about that, you, we just want you to know that you, you will have a lot of support in that area. Um, okay. We're going to touch on the application for whichever program you're interested in or credential. Um, before we do that, which part is making you most nervous? I'm curious. And I want to make sure that I, um, I'm able to cover that. So is it resume, academic statement, recommendation forms, transcripts, um, your work experience, or your English proficiency if you're an international student? So um, which one of those is making you nervous? We're going to get into each one specifically. And then if you have specific questions, um, go ahead and put those in the Q&A. But I assure you that it's a pretty straightforward, simple application. Um, don't get too bogged down with, you know, making it difficult. It's, it's really straightforward. Um, if you have questions, we have a full admissions team or myself or Lori, we can help you walk through it. Um, okay. So it looks like academic statement and recommendation are the top two issues. Okay. So we're going to address those. Let me just address, um, recommendations since that was popular first. Um, for the master's degree programs, you will need two recommendation forms. And what that means is when you go to fill out your application, you will be required to enter the name and email of your recommender into the into your application. At that time, we actually spit out an email to them and send them a form. This form is very straightforward, not complicated. It should not take them more than 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's got, you know, eight to 10 questions where they're strongly agreeing to strongly disagreeing, and then a couple open-ended paragraph questions that are not hard. Um, they can also upload a letter if they choose. Um, that's their choice. They do not have to. We are happy with the form and it carries the same weight as a letter. Um, so if you're stressed about that, just take that stress away. Um, we do try to recommend having, you know, a, a, a current supervisor or manager or previous if you can. Um, otherwise, you can kind of find a colleague or maybe you're on a board and you have, um, you know, a board member that you could ask or, or something like that. Um, the other one was, let's see, I think it was academic statement. So we recently changed our academic statement to one question that's um, 500 words or less. And then we have a couple short answer personal statements that are um, 250, 250 words or less, so very short. And then there's a couple optional ones that you can, if you feel like you have some kind of, um, just some information that we need to know when we're reviewing your application, maybe a low GPA and why that, why you had a low G GPA in your, in your bachelor's degree, or um, maybe you had a large gap in your work experience, or, you know, like myself, I was a stay-at-home mom for a long time, and you want to explain that and what your career was before that and, and now what you're doing. Um, anything like that, there are a couple optional uh, short short paragraph essays that you can fill out. Um, a note on the statement is that this is your, your place to kind of share information that we're not learning from the rest of your application. We can look at your work experience. We can look at your resume. Let's let's hear something that makes you special and, and stand out. Um, that's, that's what you want to focus a little bit more on the academic statement. Um, we do have a couple prompts, so you do have to answer the prompts, but um, that is your place to be able to, to add a little information about yourself. Um, we do require a bachelor's degree for all of our master's degrees, graduate certificate, and just taking one non-degree course. Um, the minimum GPA is 3.0. 
And if you don't meet that, that's okay. We actually do review applications holistically, uh, which means we are gonna look at your work experience. We're looking at your academic history. We wanna make sure you have positive recommendations. We're gonna get to know you in that statement. So we're not just going to look at your GPA. Um, now, if you do have a lower GPA than 3.0, we do have options and I'll, I'll touch on those here in a minute. Um, let's see. So for your application, we do need transcripts, unofficial transcripts. And what that means is that we just need a copy, scan, um, picture of your transcripts with the courses listed, your grades earned, uh, mark sheets. If you're an international student, sometimes they come in that form. Um, and then we also need the degree certificate or that the fact that your degree was actually conferred. So that typically is on a domestic transcript. International transcripts, usually it's separate and you need that degree certificate or diploma. Um, one other note, if, you're, if your bachelor's was not delivered in English, we will need English translation of those materials too for your application. Once admitted, we do require official transcripts your first semester. So at that point, we'll need official transcripts, which need to come directly from your university to our grad college. There's a couple ways um, to do that if you are unable to obtain those. Um, I'm not gonna get, the, get, get too deep into those right now, but um, you'll have some options. And then lastly, for international students, we do require a TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo score um, English uh, proficiency exam. So um, if you have questions about that, please reach out. It can be a little confusing. Um, if you're unable to obtain a test, you can also write a waiver essay, and then we would um, assess your English during an interview. So um, there's a couple options there. Okay, a couple questions I saw in the chat. Scholarships, and then we'll talk about the performance-based admissions track. We do offer a scholarship for all three of the master's degrees in partnership with Coursera. This is um, a scholarship that reimburses 70% of the tuition. Um, we we're looking for students who either have um, a financial need or they've spent um, a good amount of time uh, contributing to mentoring other other business leaders or um, contributing to society in that way. Um, Caitlin, you're a scholarship recipient, right? Yes, I am. Awesome. Um, do you mm -hmm. have anything to add about, about that experience or the application process? Pretty straightforward. Uh, it went it went a lot smoother than I anticipated. <laughs> Everything went a lot smoother than I anticipated. Um, I saw that the recommendation forms were a little bit hesitant. You're not asking your colleagues to write two big pages on a recommendation. Um, and the people around me were very happy to do that recommendation. I had a co-volunteer and a supervisor that I work with send those in um, and they report back that it was super easy, so. Good, that's good reinforcement. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand why that'd be nerve wracking because it's like, if you're you're a high level professional and maybe even the, the boss of your own company, I can see, but it's really, really simple and straightforward, so. Um, scholarship essays, so we only offer scholarships um, in the spring and the fall. And so we're past the spring deadline. If you would like to apply for a scholarship, that's just so you know, very competitive. It's a pretty small amount that we award. Um, these will be uh, due May 2nd. So you will have the scholarship essay included in your program application and you will submit all of those at the same time. We will not accept scholarships uh, applications after the fact if you've already supplied your program application and submitted it. So that's really important. May 2nd is the key date there. Um, okay, lastly, performance-based admissions track. Oh my gosh, we're almost at uh, four o'clock here too. So um, performance-based admissions track is just a, a great option for students who maybe don't meet our GPA requirement. Maybe you would like to try out the courses um, before you fully commit to a master's degree. Um, maybe you um, have a large gap in your work experience and you're just kind of uneasy about it. You would go through the same application process, but if admitted, we would admit you as a non-degree student. You're going to take two for the IMSA and three courses for the MSM and the MBA. And you have to earn a B or better in at least two of the three courses. And you would take them one at a time. We'll evaluate your grades, make sure you have an overall GPA of 3.0, and then automatically admit you into the full degree track. 
So an amazing opportunity for some students who maybe you have that 2.8, maybe even lower, little lower GPA, um, a great chance to be admitted even though you don't meet that, that hard um, 3.0 requirement, so. Um, okay, let's make sure we get to questions. Application process, Caitlin mentioned, give us like two to three weeks to get back to you and then we'll reach out either with a missing materials email, um, a decision, or we'll invite you to interview. Next deadline coming up, February 1st. Um, this would be for a March start. And again, if you can't make that deadline, that's fine. We have all three degrees starting in May. Um, that deadline would be April 4th. So if you miss the February 1st, there's a deadline coming up um, on April 4th for a May start. Um, lastly, I feel like, you know, we talked a lot of reasons about a lot of reasons why to choose geese today, just between um, our flexibility, how affordable our programs are, um, the innovative way that we deliver information with that high engagement component and, um, and in com combination with the Coursera MOOCs. Um, you're still going to get the networking that you that you crave um, being in a degree program. Um, you know, our, our MBA won program uh, MBA of the year last year, uh, even out of all of our in-person options. So that's, you know, we have award-winning programs. So we would love to have you um, reach out to us. I know, you know, Lori will put the email address in here. You can re also reach out to um, either of us personally, we'd be happy to talk. Um, last slide, I guess, um, before we jump, if anybody wants to stick around and, and we can answer some questions, but how do you feel? Like, hopefully you feel good, but how do you feel about these credentials after this presentation today? Do you feel like you have the information to be able to stack a MOOC into um, a full, you know, either a four credit hour course or a master's degree. Um, I see one yellow face. Um, please throw in the chat. You're, if you're still unsure, any specific questions, we would love to answer those. Um, and I appreciate all the feedback. This is great. Here's that QR code again. And then I'm going to pause and just check out the chat. Um, or Lori, is there anything that we missed um, question-wise? Any big bucket areas? I think we got it all. We got it all covered. All right. Awesome. Um, Caitlin, as we part ways here, any advice for some of our students here who have just taken a MOOC only and, and are kind of contemplating whether or not this is a good choice or not for them? Um, the MOOCs help you not eat the elephant in one bite. So take the MOOCs, see how you feel, add them on later, um, apply Remember that there's five years to complete um, all of the courses needed. So there's a lot of time. Definitely. There's a lot of time. I love that advice. Um, yep. all right. Well, I'm going to stop sharing here and just say thank you, Caitlin, for being here. I know you're busy and you've got, um, you know, uh, your, your kids in the background. So we really appreciate your time today and your feedback on your experience in the IMSA program. It was great. Lori, thanks for handling the chat. There was some excellent questions there. Um, come see us, come reach out to Lori or myself, and we're happy to talk. Um, especially if you're unsure about what your path should be, you have a lot of options. And so talk to us. We're happy, you know, we're used to all, we, we understand all of the credentials. We can point you in the right direction and help you uh, navigate that. So um, good to see everybody. Thanks a lot. And we'll hopefully see you all soon. Have a good day.